Welcome to Toastmaster Time TV, the show that's got everybody talking. My name is James Jeffley, and I'm excited to be the host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Like in a regular Toastmasters Club meeting, we have prepared speeches followed by an evaluation. And I'd like to introduce someone who's been on the show before in many roles, Mr. Manoj Ramanan, our evaluator. Manoj, welcome back to Toastmaster Time. Thank you, James. We have three exciting speakers today. We have Dr. Michelle Petticulus from Heart to Heart Toastmasters, who's going to talk about leadership. We have Kimmy Avery, again from Heart to Heart Toastmasters, and she's going to be talking about team building. And finally, we're going to have Hervin Malang from City Speech Toastmasters, who's also going to be talking about leadership. I'm excited, and I think we are in for a treat today, James. Back to you. Thank you very much, Manoj. I agree with you. I'm looking forward to hearing our speakers and your evaluations a little later. At this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker to the show, Dr. Michelle Petticolis. Dr. Petticolis, welcome to Toastmaster Time. Thank you very much, James. Now, you look very familiar. Really? Where do I know you from? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> We're both members of Heart to Heart. Yes. And you're the president of that club. That's correct. That's a leadership role. Indeed. How did that happen? I'm still trying to figure that out, <laughs> and I think you had something to do with it. Maybe. So how long have you been a member of that club? Exactly two years. Two years. And in that time, especially in your leadership role as president, what's been the greatest lesson for you? Well, one of, well I'm going to be talking about that in my speech, but mm -hmm. one of the things I can share with you is that just by taking that step into leadership starts to change me and change other people. Wow, just taking the just step. Just taking the step. That's amazing, that's great advice. I look forward to hearing the rest of your speech. Are you ready to give it? I'm ready. I'll give you a moment to get set and I'll tell our audience about your objectives. Dr. Petticolis from Heart to Heart Toastmasters is going to be talking about lessons in leadership. This is from the Humorously Speaking Manual and it's the Leave Them With a Smile Project. Her objectives are to prepare a closing story that reemphasizes the speech's main point and to deliver the story smoothly and effectively. Stepping into a leadership role can transform both your speaking and your life. Michelle will share the three keys to authentic leadership she's learned after becoming president of Heart to Heart Toastmasters. Learn how she connects, inspires, and motivates people to take action. Lessons in Leadership, Dr. Michelle Petticolis. Dr. Michelle Petticolis. Lessons in Leadership. When I first joined Toastmasters, they gave me two manuals. One was competent communicator, and the other one was competent leadership. Well, I understood the competent communicator. I came to Toastmasters to become a better speaker. But what was this competent leadership? I mean, I'm a coach. I enable people to heal their emotional wounds and to navigate life challenges. What's this leadership business? I figured it was just Toastmasters' way of making sure that we took care of the other Toastmasters' roles, like evaluator and timekeeper. Six months later, I was president of Toastmasters. Oh my gosh, how did that happen? I'm not a leader. It turned out that that was one of the most important steps I have ever taken, not only in improving my speaking, but also my work and even my life. I have learned three lessons from stepping into this leadership role. They are communication, emotion, and trust. Communication, well, duh, that's what we do as speakers, but as leaders, we need to communicate our vision. 
So communication actually has two functions. One is to inform, to tell people about your vision and to give them details about it. But don't blow them over with a fire hose. As pre former President Dwight D. Eisenhower said, don't hit people over the head. That's abuse, not leadership. Connection. We need to connect to the people that we're leading. The word communication, the prefix com is the same prefix in community, commons, commerce, and commune. It means bring together. And that's what we do when we're leaders. We not only inform, but we bring them together. But not like dating on the internet, real communication. But to get people to take action, you need emotion. Energy in motion. It's true, people use emotions to make their decisions and then use reason and logic to justify their choices. It's true, a neuroscientist, Antonio Damasio, did a study of people who had had damage to the emotional centers of their brain and they couldn't make the smallest decision. Spock is a myth. Now, many leaders understand the power of emotions. For example, some leaders use fear to make people take action. Don't vote for that person because they'll take away all your money and they'll take you away your freedom. Some use shame. Don't vote for that person. They'll take away all your money and they'll take away your freedom. And won't you feel like an idiot? Some use Twitter. Don't vote. To be an authentic leader, I invite you to use a hug. Embrace your audience. Bring them in. Connect heart to heart. Inspire them. To do that, you also need trust. They need to trust you that you are going to deliver that you are not going to betray them, that you are going to stand your ground even when the going gets tough. But to do that, you actually need to trust yourself. And sometimes this can be very challenging if you've been brought up by, like many people have, to not trust yourself, not to listen to that inner voice, to put your real desires and mission on hold. That was sort of what I dealt with for a long time. I was a people pleaser. But just before my mother died, she transmitted an important message. And that is, live and die without regret. Because life is too short to not step into your mission, to not live on purpose. And that helped give me my mission, which is to empower people to break through their blocks so that they can step into their power. When I became president of Heart to Heart, my former, the former president, James Jeffley, said to me, the president's role is the easiest role. You delegate all of your responsibilities. Well, that's only if there are enough people to delegate and you trust them. And we actually had a small club at that time and I was afraid I was going to scare them all away. But as I stepped into my leadership, I gained more confidence. I actually impacted the other members and actually got good at enrolling more people. The important thing is that you need to trust them as much as you need to trust yourself and they need to trust you. So I leave you with a final thought. My mission is to encourage people to step into their mission. If you were to die tomorrow, would you die with no regrets? And if your answer is no, what's holding you back? And what are you going to do about it? 
I invite you to step into your leadership. And together, we can change the world. Wow, what a wonderful speech by Dr. Michelle Petacolis. Communication, emotion, trust, and I really love what she said about dying with no regrets. Show up and, and, and do the thing that you came to do. Manoj, what did you think about Dr. Petacolis' speech? I thought the speech was fabulous. I loved the passion that Dr. Michelle Petacolis brought into the speech. It's like she lived the speech. She was moving forward, she was moving backward, she was doing all these dramatic gestures to underline the point and to ensure that the audience absorbs what she's saying. I felt her body language was top notch. Her vocal variety was right on cue. And I loved the three points, which were again crystal clear. The one area I would have wanted her to, to maybe communicate more is maybe repeat those points. I felt her points were powerful. If she were to repeat them maybe one more time, it would have left me with an even better impression of her speech. But overall, what a great speech. And I'm really looking forward to her next set of speeches as well. Back to you, James. Thank you, Manoj. Now I would like to introduce our second speaker to Toastmaster Time, someone who's also very familiar, Kimmy Avery. Kimmy, welcome back to Toastmaster great Time. Great to be here. Thank you. So where do I know you from? Hmm. Oh, heart to heart. Heart to heart again. <laughs> so what is it about that club? What attracted you to that club? Oh, well, I love the club because there are people who are really intentional about speaking. Mm -hmm. And we get fine-tuning distinctions about what makes our speeches better. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of places in the world, if you're already a pretty good speaker, where you're going to get the distinctions that up-level your skill set. And heart to heart really does that. Right. And so what special distinctions are you sharing tonight with our audience in your speech? I'm going to be talking about super genius teams. Super genius Super teams. genius teams, yeah. Up-leveling our collaborative experience mm -hmm. so that we have this, what I call the structure of genius, mm -hmm. which is more than one head working together at full capacity. Mm. That sounds yeah. like a great thing. Yeah. Are you ready to give your speech? I am. Give you a moment to prepare and I'll tell our audience about your objectives. Fabulous. So Kimmy Avery, another member of Heart to Heart, is going to be talking about super genius teams. This is from the Presentation Mastery Pathway. Her project is also to inspire your audience. Her objectives are to write and deliver a speech to inspire others. In this speech, you will learn the power of understanding the differences and unique attributes men and women bring to the work environment. This powerful collaboration is the structure of genius. Utilizing each person's unique attributes is the key to creating super genius teams. Kimmy Avery, super genius teams, super genius teams, Kimmy Avery. Susan just left the meeting. She is frustrated, she's angry, she's hurt. She thinks that the men in that meeting did not care one hoot what she was talking about. They didn't listen to her and they cut her off. Last week, she told her manager, Mark, that if she didn't get more respect in the office, that she was quitting this job. And Mark, on the other hand, was, had just met with Susan. He wants her to succeed. He spent a ton of time and energy recruiting her, bringing her into the company, because he thinks she's brilliant. He thinks she's an asset to the team, but he doesn't know how to fix it. Have you ever had an experience at work where you haven't been able to get your point across, where you haven't felt heard, or you've been in a meeting where it goes on and on in all different directions and nobody seems to get to the point? I meet with people all the time, and this is the kind of example that shows up everywhere. My name is Kimmy Avery, and I'm a relationship navigation specialist. I work with men and women who are challenged relating with themselves and the group in order to have a relationship that works. They don't have the toolkit because we've, fa we've fallen into this mistaken assumption that men and women are exactly the same, as well as equal. Equal's a great thing. Thinking that we're the same is a big challenge. I bring my skills as an NLP master practitioner and trainer, a certified relationship coach, 
and I have a master's in counseling. I bring all of those things together to help my clients individually and professionally get the help that they need in order to have amazing relationships. So I want to talk to you about super genius teams today. Teams, we have all kinds of teams, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work at a company, you have teams of people in order to be successful, you have to have a team. And teams can be great or they can be kind of mediocre. Genius, one person can be a genius and that's a fabulous thing. But the structure of genius is when you have many people working together more than one at least, who are working together, collaborating, and bringing their own unique skill set to the group. And the structure of that, when you take it to the next level, to super, you take the superness in to helping accentuate the uniqueness and each person's attributes. So that's where you get super genius teams. Usually, we have problems accepting another point of view, or we have problems with unspoken expectations or assumptions about other people. I call this stuck in your own head syndrome. We all suffer from it and it creates big problems. I call it CEOs for short, stuck in your own head syndrome. And that keeps us from seeing another person listening to their point of view and actually hearing their ideas as unique and different. As a foundation, we look at the masculine and feminine or the individualistic perspective, which is the masculine style of being. That's single focused, direct, clear, linear in thinking and systematic. On the other hand, you've got the relational experience, which is the feminine style, which is all about collaboration, interdependency, multitasking, multi-focus that are unrelated. And women tend to look at men as misbehaving versions of themselves because they're stuck in CEOs. They're looking at the other person as a version of themselves so they're not hearing their perspective. They're not hearing their ideas. They're not hearing their uniqueness. On the other hand, the masculine looks at the feminine version and says, why don't you get to the point? Why are you not single focused? Why do you interrupt me all the time when you've got new ideas, when I'm focused on something else? You can see that these two perspectives, neither one of them is right or wrong. And actually, they collaborate together when they're appreciating their uniqueness. So the group that I told you about before with Susan and Mark, Susan, when Mark learned about the feminine way of being, he understood why she was emotional and what she needed in order to fit in. Mark taught the rest of his team how to ask for a woman to get to the point in a way that has her feel like she's respected and valued. Susan began to feel more comfortable. She felt like part of the team and all, everybody won in that situation. I'm curious what you, your life would be like if you had a better sense of team in your experience, in your workplace or at home or in your entrepreneur life. What steps are you going to take today to appreciate the differences and develop super genius teams in your life. I've heard a lot of speakers talk about teamwork and team building in organizations, but I've never heard of anyone explaining it in that way, super genius teams. And what I really loved about Kimmy's speech was the idea of the collective genius Manoj, what did you think about Kimmy's speech? That was one of the most fascinating speeches I've listened to, James. I think she really drew me in with her opening, where she really played out a scene mm -hmm. between Mark and Susan. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued, and I really wanted to know how the speech was going to flow. I loved the way she was crystal clear in her communication. She spoke about specific challenges, 
the masculine perspective, the feminine perspective and how when you merge it, super genius teams can be formed. I felt the speech was superb. The one area where I would really want her to improve was, I, I love the conversational style where it started towards the end when she was talking about Mark and Susan resolving the issue, I would have loved to see that conversation again. Mm -hmm. That would have really drove home the point in a more powerful way. But overall, another fantastic speech and I really look forward to her next set of speeches. Back to you, James. Thank you, Manoj. And now I'd like to introduce our third speaker to the show. Mr. Herwin Malang. Herwin, welcome to Toastmaster time. Thanks, sir. Welcome, James. So how long have you been in Toastmasters? I've been with City Speech Toastmasters for about four months now. Four months? Yes, sir. And you're on TV already? Yes, sir. Okay. So why did you join Toastmasters? I joined Toastmasters because in order for me to communicate my intention to making a difference out there mm -hmm. and to live life fully, I want to be able to communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to show up more often wow. and Toastmasters is the gateway to get there. Well, I love what you're saying about just showing up and showing up more often and that is, I think, a great trait of leaders. Leaders show up. Now, you've been showing up in service for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, sir. 20 years. 20 years and you were a member of? The Navy, sir. United States Navy. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And so tonight you're going to be talking about something that you know a lot about, leadership. Yes, sir. Something that I'm passionate about. Well, are you ready to give your speech? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to hearing it. I'll give you Thank a moment you. to prepare. I'll tell the audience about your objectives. Herwin is from City Speech Toastmasters. He's going to be talking about four leadership characteristics essential to becoming a leader. This is from the Presentation Mastery Pathway, and his project is, again, to inspire your audience. His speech is going to be centered around four leadership characteristics, and he'll incorporate his real-life experiences from 20 years in the Navy into the subject as succinctly as possible and how these four qualities of leadership have continued to impact his life both professionally and personally. Herwin Malang, four leadership characteristics essential to becoming a leader. Four leadership characteristics essential to becoming a leader. Herwin Malang. It's been exactly two years this month. I remember sitting on the bus on my way to LaGuardia Airport in New York. I felt this incredible excitement because I knew at that time that would be the last time that I would need to hop on a plane is to get a glimpse of my family before I finally retire and reunite with them permanently. On the same token, I was worried I was worried because of the uncertainty that would follow, the following retirement that would take place the next month. So I, I used that travel time to rethink my focus on what I would be doing when I retired from the Navy. I started thinking about the leadership, managerial skills, and abilities that I learned from the Navy. And I thought that was a very good start. And I decided to focus on leadership because I used to think that leadership and management are the same. But the more I started learning and growing my understanding of what leadership is about, the more I'm convinced and realize that leadership is totally different from management. Because to me, management is all about the control of things, whereas leadership it's about dealing with people. So uh, it's about embracing people. It's about developing them. It's about growing them. It's about helping them, collaborating with them to build that human connection and acknowledge and celebrate that value distribution that they bring. It also got me thinking whether these four leadership characteristics that I'm about to share with you were something that I demonstrated or that's thinking that I had permeated my mind question whether I was just simply following. So these leadership characteristics are courage, accountability, humility, and integrity. One of the most important leadership characteristics is courage, because courage is the ability and the capacity to endure and persevere in the face of fear, in the face of struggles, in the face of difficult times. 
There were times in the military where I could have given up. The time where I was having so much difficulties understanding and expressing myself in the English language when I first started out. The time when my mind was confused and my heart was broken in pieces because my marriage ended. I didn't really know how to summon up or where, when to summon up my courage. But I sustained hope. I kept that faith alive. I kept that belief in myself that one day everything would turn out to be okay. And it did. With courage comes with tremendous accountability. And that accountability itself is taking responsibility, absolute responsibility for your action. Yes, responsibility is something that you can delegate. But accountability itself lies with you. There were times in the military where I lacked off accountability. Why? Because I didn't protect it. I dabbled into many things that were presented in front of me, good opportunities. But at the end of the day, none of those really gave me satisfaction and fulfillment and real progress. But just like any other great leaders, I understood that for every mistake, for every failure, there is that opportunity for growth. And that is where I got my courage. Because just like any other leaders, they understand that humility is essential to learning, to becoming a leader. Perhaps what pulls courage, accountability, and humility is the value that integrity brings to one character. It's all about integrity. Integrity is easier said than done. It's kind of like when doing things where no one is looking. But in our society today, what seems common sense is not common practice. When things get tough, when you're faced with difficult situation, people tend to act in a dishonest way. Perhaps what overlays all these four leadership characteristics of courage, accountability, humility, integrity, is a philosophy that leadership is important, that leadership is not easy. Just think about it. If leadership was easy, there would be more people who demonstrate mastery, passion, audacity, and love in the way they carry out their lives. But there's good news here. The good news here, leadership can be taught. Leadership can be learned. If and only you have the eyes and hearts to view it that way. So if there's any one thing that I would hope and wish that you can take away from this speech, my invitation for you is this. The world is short of leaders. The world is short of humanitarians. Why wait for them to show up when you have the opportunity to start taking action because you already have it in you to become one of them? What an important message for any time, but especially these times. Why wait for others to show up when you have it within you? Step forward and be one of them. Absolutely. What an amazing call to action. That was a fabulous speech. The thing that I loved about his speech was it, it, was, it came from the heart. Mm -hmm. It was so authentic. It was so sincere. And I loved his opening where he drew me into his story. Mm -hmm. I also loved the way he structured it. Right where he clearly demonstrated where he clearly demonstrated the four characteristics and he took us through each one of them clearly exactly it was an amazing speech and i loved all of the speakers tonight and i thank you for your insightful evaluations thank you james well that's all the time we have for this edition of toastmaster time tv on behalf of all of the staff and volunteers and crew here at the midpin uh, media center I'd like to uh, thank everyone for their participation and their help. Toastmaster Time TV is a production of District 57 Toastmasters. You can learn more about our show at toastmastertime.com. You can visit District 57 Toastmasters at d57tm.org. 
And if you'd like to learn more about Toastmasters International or sign up for a club, you can visit them on the web at toastmasters.org. On behalf of tonight's evaluator, Manoj Ramanan, our speakers, Dr. Michelle Petticolas, Kimmy Avery, and Herwin Malang, I'm James Jeffley, and I encourage you to keep talking. <laughs>